Hey guys, I'm here today to do my March wrap up. These are all the books I read in March. I read six books this month, so I'm excited to just dive in and talk to you guys about them. So first I picked up Caravel by Stephanie Garber, Caravel. This is a book that's supposed to be like the Night Circus. It is marketed as like, you know, another Night Circus type book, which I was a fan of the Night Circus. It's a really good circusy magic story. And this was not good at all. It's about two sisters and you're told that they love each other and they do like anything for each other. But you don't see it at all in the story. This is one of my negatives of this. They're supposed to be such good sisters and love each other and do anything for each other, but you don't see them actually ever loving each other. It's kind of like a one-way street, like she says like, oh, I love her, but in her head she's like, do I? And then the other sister never shows any affection towards her. The whole point of this book is that Carvel is this game and you're supposed to either watch the game or play the game, but it's just like in this town, there's nothing to actually watch if you watch the game. It's very confusing, it's not like a circus, it's not like you watch any shows or anything. It's just a town with different shops. There was like a dress shop and a clock shop. So there's nothing to actually watch. So it's like you have to be playing the game. But the game this year is all about the main character's sister Tess gets like Tessa gets kidnapped and this main character, I think her name was Scarlet, is trying to save her by playing the game and they are told that this whole world is a game, nothing they tell you is real, everything could be a lie, it's all a game, blah blah blah. They say this over and over, but then the main character, every time anything happens, takes everything super seriously, thinks everything's the end of the world, but we're told that like everything's a lie and everything's a game. So I never trusted anything. I thought the main character was ridiculous and kind of stupid because she trusted everything when she was told not to, basically. And it just kind of cliffhanger ends, but not in an enjoyable way. And I don't think it was written very well. I don't think it was a very good story. I did not compare it to The Night Circus or anything when I read it. I just read it and afterwards went, wow. That was nothing like The Night Circus. It was not even a good book. Like, it wasn't a good book. And I'm just super sad because I was looking forward to this book for probably over a year because it sounded amazing to me. And it's just not good. If you want to read a good circus carnival book, either read The Night Circus or read Full Tilt by Neil Schusterman. That is a super good carnival, kind of scary, you're in the game book way more than this one is. Next I read Deceptions Princess by Esther Freshner, and this one was super cute. I actually really enjoyed it. I read the first half of this probably a few months ago, maybe in like January, and I remember I was really, really, really enjoying the first half. So much stuff happened. It's about a girl, and she is a princess, and her dad is like one of the high kings of Scotland and she has like 10 sisters and she's the youngest so she kind of gets away with everything because she's her dad's favorite. But so much happens in the first half of the book. She like tries to train to be a warrior because she wants to show her dad she's strong and her best friend trains her. Then something happens to her best friend and then it's like another guy comes into town who's trying to work with the king and his son comes in and his son trains animals like hawks and falcons and things like this and she starts training one with him and becomes really connected with all these animals and it's like such a good story so much happens in the first half but then I put it down for so long so when I picked it back up the second half wasn't as good for me not as many things happened in the second half and it was kind of more slow going and I did like it and it kind of cliffhanger ended and now that there is another book in the series I'm not sure if I would really pick it up probably from the library if I saw it there but I'm not gonna like go out and look for it you know and so it was pretty good at first I was really enjoying it but I think I put it down for too long my Kindle I read The Crown's Game by Evelyn Syke this took place in like Russia and it is about a king who wants to be protected and he wants to be protected by a sorcerer in town but then you find out there are actually two sorcerers in the town there is a boy and a girl sorcerer and so it's kind of a battle of who can be the best sorcerer to protect the king it was actually really good i did enjoy it but it was just like three books for me 
and so it didn't feel original. I felt like it was The Night Circus, Throne of Glass, A Darker Shade of Magic all put together in the story. So nothing felt original because every single thing was either from one of those three books. And maybe that was just me, but I swear nothing was original, nothing was unique because each of these things happened in one of those books because it was about they were trying to be the best, you know, sorcerer. It was like, oh, the best assassin. Who could be the best... You know, so it was like throwing a glass, it was like, oh, who can be the best one? And then it was like, oh, they have to fight to be the best one. So there's only one, and that's like the Night Circus. They fought to be the best, like, magic user. And, like, this was the same thing, like, who can do the best things, and whoever does, like, only one will survive. And, and then the relationship between the prince and the boy sorcerer were exactly the same as the relationship between, um, Kel and... I can't remember the prince in A Darker Shade of Magic, but their relationship, it was the same. I really liked this book, but it really wasn't anything unique or special. It was those three stories put together for me, but I enjoy those three stories, so I wasn't really mad. I really did enjoy it, and I really do think I'll pick up the next book in the series, because the cliffhanger ended and I was, like, into the story. I actually did like the characters, even though they are the same characters from three other books, but still. I'm excited, I still want to read the next one, and I would recommend it if you, maybe you shouldn't read those books, because then I think you'd probably super love this, because it would seem unique and cool, but even if you did read those books and you liked them, I think you'd like this story because it does it justice, I think it's all the good parts of those books and this book. Then I read Space Battle Lunchtime by Natalie Reyes. This was one of the authors I saw at Emerald City Comic Con, so I wanted to pick up her work. I really enjoyed her in a panel, and this was such a good graphic novel. I gave it five stars. I loved it. It's literally, like, chopped in space, so it's just her, like, competing on this space kitchen show against all these different aliens and the art is adorable and like all the aliens are adorable the show concept is so cute and the next one doesn't come out for so long I'm really sad but I can't wait to keep reading this series I just am in love with her art and in love with this storyline I think there's going to be a really good friendship romance coming up and I'm just excited for it and it reminds me a lot of Undertale, like the characters, how they look, are very similar to Undertale characters for me. And I loved Undertale, so I'm just loving this. I love this concept. I love the Chopped in Space. It's so cute. And yeah, I love everything about this. Then I picked up Lumberjanes Band Together. Um, this is volume 5, and Lumberjanes is a cute graphic novel series. It's five friends, and they're Camp Kelsler, and they are in the summer camp. It's like Girl Scout camp type thing, and it's just each book is crazy adventures. This one was all about them meeting, like, mermaids, and these mermaids had, like, a rock band. It was so cool. This is probably one of my favorite graphic novels that they've come out with recently. I thought it was really cute. I love mermaids, and I love music, so I thought it was a good one downfall for me for these series is each chapter is illustrated by a different author and I don't like some of these people's art and it's not I'm not to be rude but it's just like I really like Noelle Stevenson's art and that's about it and everyone else's is kind of like eh to the characters for me like they don't look as good as her art and so I really wish she had done all of them I like that it is all these people together doing this, but I just don't think their art is as up to standard as hers. So like it's kind of hard to get through some of them because I don't think it looks very good. And I mean, yes, it's way better than I could ever do. I am not an artist. I could never draw these characters. But just for me, for it to be published, I don't think some of this art is as good as it could be if she did it or I think one of the other girls does really good art too, they're very similar. But all the other ones are just a little too weird for me, but I'm still going to continue with the series and I still love it, I still love the storyline, it's just some of the art is just not for me. And finally in March I listened to Stars Above by Marissa Meyer. 
This is all of the novellas combined in like one bind up and I listened to it on audiobook. So I am finally done with the Lunar Chronicle series. Yay! I did it! I did it! I never thought I would. I read Cinder so many years ago and I hated it and I said I would never read this series. But I'm glad I gave it a second chance and I listened to the whole series on audiobook. And this one was okay. It was just a bunch of novellas, but it was basically just like information we already knew. Completely handhelding, telling us everything about the series instead of letting our brains kind of fill in the gap. So it like went back and told us like how Cinder got into the family she's in and like how Scarlet and her grandmother like came to be and how Wolf and it's like we already knew this stuff just by reading the series and like knowing backstories but this like held our hand and showed us absolutely every detail of knowing it and I'm like this isn't really a novella this is just like filling us in on like literally every part of the story. Novellas to me would be like I don't know a short story about like Prince Kai as a kid that we didn't know. There was a few good ones. There was one about Thorn being 13 and like him in school and I really liked that one because that one didn't really have to do with like where he came to be today. So and then there was one though and it was like a retelling of like the Little Mermaid and it was like the little android and that one was kind of cute I guess. And then there was like Happily Ever After one and it was like the end end of the Lunar Chronicles and it's like someone's wedding, I don't want to say who in case you haven't read the series and I don't want to spoil you, but it's a wedding at the end and that one was just like, ugh, I'm gonna barf, this is like happily ever after round two. Winter was literally like happily ever after, everything's gonna end up perfect, so this novella was just like, just kidding, we're gonna make it even more perfect. So like, I mean it was cute and good, but like, unneeded I guess. So like. I guess I liked the stories, I liked knowing more, but I don't think it was needed, I don't think it was special, and I'm glad I listened to it for free on audiobook, you know, and that I didn't, like, own it. Hey guys, those were the books I read in March. What are some books you read recently? Please let me know below, and thank you guys so much for watching. Bye guys!